<laughs> Good morning and welcome to X Christian Center. We welcome our online audience on Facebook as well as YouTube, soon to be streaming on our website at axcc.org. We just want to thank you for taking time out this Sunday to just praise the Lord. Can anybody give me a shout? Amen. All right. Well, if you are looking for Axe Christian Center, you have found us, and we're going to have some church. Somebody say some church. Some church. Somebody say this is how. This is how. We fight our battles. We fight our battles. Yeah, that's right. Today we're going to be speaking on the battle. And many of you may see my picture. You see Pastor Rodney up there versus Brother Rod. But how many people know, if we were to be honest, that the battle that we face sometimes is not with the enemy, but with the inside of our selves. And so we're going to have an opportunity to look at that. You know, uh, I was I was looking up some things and just to see what uh, the third week after Easter is called. And I ran into this thing and it says that, you know, it's actually called the Good Shepherd Sunday, where Jesus began to speak out of John chapter 10. He says that I am what? The Good, the good Shepherd. Shepherd. And because he's the Good Shepherd he says that there is a response that happens when he speaks. Amen. He says that when I speak my what? My sheep. No, my voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That's what he said, right? When I speak, who hears? My sheep. My sheep, my people. My people hear my voice. And I think that's so important. Uh, and that's one of the things that we'll also be talking about is that when Jesus speaks, everybody needs to be listening. All right, so I want to know, do you have your listening ears on? If you got your listening ears on, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Let's get ready so that we can have church today. Amen. Amen. All right, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, where we thank you and praise you for all that Jesus will speak to us, all that he will teach us through the scriptures. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come in, be our teacher, be our God, be our advocate, some of us, we just need your help. So be our helper. So we just thank you for all that we will experience together today. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. Amen. All right. Somebody say together. Together. We will worship. We will worship. All right. So with that being said, we're going to invite the person who is going to lead us in worship. Come on, Pastor Sharon. Are you still ready to have church? I'm still ready. I am ready, ready, ready. To have church now, girl. <laughs> Amen. Glory this to God. Glory to God. Y'all know that. Y'all heard that, that opening was, this is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. You know, we fight our battles in numerous ways, but how many of you know that the battle really isn't even ours? The, the, the battle belongs to God. The battle belongs to our Lord. Second, Second Chronicles 2015 says, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. And the way we can turn it over to him is to do it in praise and worship. There's a song out there where it says, praise is our weapon. I believe it's Marvin Sapp that saying, it says, praise is our weapon. We use our hands. He's teaching our hands to war. And how? So that we can praise and we can lift our hands up and we can praise the power down and we can call upon the angel's army, heaven's army, to come and help us in time of need. The battle is the Lord. And our job is to praise him on down. Amen? So y'all ready to praise? All right. So let's get it, let's get it started. Let's see if we can we can go ahead and start singing, worshiping him this morning, if y'all are ready. Let's see. Can we get it?
moving. And if you paid attention to the lyrics, it talked about not being ashamed, not being ashamed to praise him, not being ashamed of the gospel. That's actually the verse of the day in the U version today, not being ashamed of the gospel because lies within it is the power to save, power to salvation, power to be delivered from whatever's going on. So as we are in battle, we praise him because we're not ashamed to declare the works of our heavenly father who is our ultimate victor. He causes victory to come. Amen? Amen. I don't know about y'all, but that just makes me excited. So, and uh, as we, you know, begin to transition ourselves to begin to worship, we want to worship him in spirit and in truth. We want to worship him for all that he is. We want to worship him because he lives and he reigns and he rules. And he is victory. Amen? God is so good. God is so good. He's so good. So I want us to go ahead and just get ourselves ready. Lift your hands and just thank the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We exalt you in this place and we say we stand. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our adoration. You are so worthy and wonderful. Marvelous is your name. Magnificent are you. You are high and lifted up, and you are Christ. You are God. You are King, and you are Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead and worship you. Amen.
people. If you can't think of anything else to say, you can just hum or lift up your lies to them and say, la, 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 la. And he will know exactly what that means. Because the Lord knows our heart. And the Holy Spirit is present whenever we lift up our praise, whenever we lift up our worship. He inhabits. That means he dwells. He comes and rests. He comes and sits. He comes and be a part of the praise. He is the ultimate praise leader when we're having our private worship party. Amen? Amen. Well, let's go ahead and get ready for the word because that's the that's what we're here for. We're here. We have sweet praise. We lift them up. And he is now present. And God has a word for you and me right through our pastor, Pastor Rodney. Pastor Rodney, you ready? Amen. All right. Well, let's come on up. Let's come on up. Let's get the word going. Are we ready? We Amen. ready? We ready Amen. to get tired up? Let's do All it. right. Amen. <laughs> we're going to fight the battle. Hallelujah. We're going to fight the battle. Chasing after you, Chasing Lord. Chasing after you. Amen. <laughs> no matter what I have to do, I'm praising my way through. I'm praising my way through. I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after you. Amen. Well, I just want to say good morning again, and let's get ready. If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and meet me in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, and we're going to be looking at the particular passage of Emmaus, the road to Emmaus, where Jesus appeared. But I just wanted to share some of these facts. So it says that the third Sunday of Easter, then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. So the purpose is to help us, so the purpose is to help us to hear Jesus, see Jesus, Receive Jesus and serve Jesus. All right. The purpose is to help us to hear Jesus. Hear Jesus. See Jesus. See Jesus. Receive Jesus. Receive Jesus. And serve Jesus. And serve Jesus. So the risen Savior meets the two discouraged disciples on the road. Amen. From Jerusalem to Emmaus. They felt their hopes were dashed. Jesus opened the scriptures to them. Any, any, anybody feel like, you know, there's something that's closed up and you need for Jesus to open the scriptures to you? Mm -hmm. This is what happens. To help them understand and they recognize him in the breaking of bread. And the brokenness was no longer a scandal for them. Hmm. We're going to talk about that. And they remember that their hearts were burning within them as they heard him put it together for them. Today, we can ask for the gift of understanding, affection for the relationship of the new life Jesus wants to offer. Mm. Jesus wants to offer this new life and this new relationship. So I call this the battle, and I say, as my sub, is that the things you know, but you don't believe. That's where these guys were. It was things that they knew, but they did not believe. To get to the slide that you want to be on, shift F5. Yeah, the things you know, but you don't believe. Anybody ever been in that place? I call it a battle. 
things you know, but it's what you don't believe. And this is where those guys were, they knew it, but they didn't believe it. Things you know. I, I kind of put down some things about things we know. Brokenness, right? <laughs> but we don't believe it. Anybody ever been broken, but everybody else around you can tell you this. You can see that you're broken, but you simply don't believe it. You simply don't know that what you're experiencing is brokenness, prayerlessness. <laughs> you know, you've been in that place and it seems like nothing's happening. Things that you know is, is prayerlessness, but you don't believe it because you believe that you are a strong prayer warrior. Grief can be another one of those things that you know, but you don't believe. You're trying to figure out what's going on and you can't seem to feel, you can't seem to get over some things and it can be something as simple as grief. Things you know, but you don't believe. Uh, and the big one, can we talk about it? Change. You know change is coming. It's inevitable. But you don't believe it's going to happen. Well, you're not by yourself because in Luke chapter 24, starting verse 25, it says this. It says, then Jesus said to them, what did he say? I'm reading from the NLT. You foolish people. You find it hard to believe all that the prophets wrote in the scripture. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Hmm. Let's read that again. Then Jesus said to them, you foolish people, you find it so hard to believe that all the prophets wrote in the scriptures. They wrote it in the scriptures. Something that they knew because what? They had been trained to read the scriptures and when the scriptures came alive, they didn't believe. Wasn't it clearly predicted that the Messiah would have to suffer all these things before entering his glory? Before entering his glory. Before entering his glory before they can begin to even recognize what was going on. Mm -hmm. They're on the road and they think they just having a conversation. <laughs> Isn't that something? That in our own lives, how we can be actually walking and talking with the Lord Jesus and not even recognizing that it's God. That's one of the things that I call the battle is that, you know, we're waiting to hear from God and God is standing right there talking to you. Mm -hmm. And he's just walking with you and just fellowshipping with you and you're still praying, Lord, give me a word. I need to hear from you. And I, I, I just I just wonder if God just sits back and just say, yeah, but what else do you need? <laughs> what more do you need? Well, you know, some of us need more. And, and I'm so thankful that we serve a God who says where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. Amen. So in other words, is that, you know, God is saying, I'm glad you need more because I'm a God who can begin to give you more. I can begin to pour out more. And they're walking and they're having this conversation. And it's a great one. So great that, you know, they didn't want the visitor who they did not recognize. Ain't that something? <laughs> you don't know who you're walking with, but you know, the conversation is so good. Mm -hmm. Don't leave. Hang out with us a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of God we serve. I mean, he just hangs out with us just a little bit longer. And we still don't even recognize this battle that we're facing because it's something that is internal. This battle that we're facing until we have a meal. Mm. I wrote this in my notes. I said, it takes a meal to get us to see what has always been before us. It takes a meal. These guys have spent the day walking with the risen Savior and did not know it. But it says in verse 29, but they begged him, stay the night with us, since it is getting late, so he went home with them. Hmm. Come on, y'all. You got to love this piece. You know, here it is that you're going through some things and you're waiting to hear from the Lord, and the Lord said, guess what? I'm just going to go home with you. It doesn't like God going home with you. As they sat down to eat, 
He took the bread and he blessed it. And we've seen that before, haven't we? Mm -hmm. He took the bread and he blessed it. Then he broke it and gave it to them. Watch this. Verse 31, it says, Suddenly their eyes were opened and they recognized who? Him. They recognized Jesus. They recognized all that had been said all day. They finally recognized, oh, man, it's Jesus. All this time. And at that moment, he disappeared. Mm. You know, look at that. That's revelation right there, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> wow. 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 It was him. How many people can begin to say that, you know, I've been waiting for him to show up, but I didn't recognize that it was him who's been speaking to me and talking to me and teaching me until he disappeared. <laughs> I wrote this down in my notes. That's the third point is this. We feel it before we believe it. I'm going to go back up until you guys get some of these points. The things you know but don't believe. Second one, it takes a meal to get us to see what has always been before us. And the third one is we feel it before we believe it. And it says in verse 32, they said to each other, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? <laughs> Let's go back. What did he say? He says, they said to each other, I'm in a real battle. I've been waiting for the Lord to speak. They said to each other, but we felt something, didn't we? Didn't our hearts burn? Didn't we feel something as he was talking to us? Wasn't there inner witness inside of us? Why else would we be feeling the fire on the inside if it had not been the Lord? It says, didn't our hearts burn within us as he talked with us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? I don't know about y'all, but... That's my point right there. We got to wait and shout. That was it. <laughs> he explained the scriptures to us. See, we're in this battle. I and mean, we got a lot of things that's going on. And we're trying to ask God, God, what do I do? And God is saying, what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to explain the scriptures for you. Well, how long that's going to take? Well, I don't know. Maybe we have to walk all day before you even begin to recognize that this is the scriptures that's being poured out for you. Maybe we have to sit down and have a meal before you recognize that this is the scriptures that's being poured out for you. Maybe what has to happen is that you have to have this burning sensation inside your heart to begin to understand that he's trying to open up the scriptures to you. But anyway, what, what, what the scripture is telling us is that it's Jesus who is witnessing to these men in the midst of their battle, in the midst of their misunderstanding, in the midst of all of their questions, what took place. It is Jesus who is providing the witness. Hmm. Can I get an amen? Mm -hmm. he, he, he's, he's trying to get us to see that you're not in this battle alone. He's trying to get us to see that it ain't even your battle. Because they were trying to understand, like, how can this guy be walking with us from Jerusalem and not even know what had happened to Jesus? <laughs> you know, isn't that something? How we want to try to explain to God what's been taking place and not even recognize that it's God that is with us. Mm. We want to give the 411 and not even recognize that it is God who is with us. I, I love it because these are teachable moments. <laughs> it's teachable. It is this thing like, you know, like, man, you know, I've been reading scriptures all my life and I never understood it until now. Why is that? Because God showed up in the relationship and he walked with you mm -hmm. and he talked with you. You, 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 you guys ever you, you guys ever had you know those conversations you're like why am I having this conversation <laughs> 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 we already know what the conclusion of this is 
But it's because you love the person that you continue to what? Walk with them. Mm -hmm. You continue to talk with them. Because what did you do? You perceived that they still weren't understanding. See, we have a lot of this that goes on, you know, and so that's why I put my picture up there because I have Pastor Rodney over here who's reading through these scriptures, but sometimes they don't get over to Brother Rodney. It takes a minute <laughs> before I begin to get, oh, wait a minute, oh, that's for you, Rodney. That ain't for the pastor. This, this for you. This is something that you need to be applying in your own personal life. Hmm. Uh, I wish somebody could give me a, a witness of what it's like to have the battle where, you know, uh, you're doing the studying for the people. And what God is saying is that, no, this is for you. It, this ain't for the people. See, we have the battle that's going on where we're thinking this is what we're going to get the people. And he says, no, no, no. I'm getting ready to open this thing up and this is for you. This is for your understanding. This is something to set you on fire. Can, can I take a moment and say that God wants to set you on fire? Hmm. He wants for the scriptures to burn inside of you. See, something happens to us once the scriptures begin to burn inside of us. You know, people ain't got to go and tell us what it says no more. It's something that takes place that we witness. It's something that takes place that, you know, nobody else has to tell me what is mm -hmm. taking place. Amen. Sharing your, uh, your it takes place, and God tells you, Keep going, okay. Something that has to take place inside of you. So I call it the battle. Because what we we're really saying is that I'm waiting. And I need some understanding. So it's a battle to feel God before you will believe God. Hmm. A battle to feel God before you will believe God. That's what they were saying is that, you know, the scripture is burning inside of me. It's a witness. But I, I don't still don't know if this is what... I believe this, this, this battle. It says, you know it is God, but you need others to confirm it, or you need to see. That this is what's taking place in our society. It says we got a lot of people that they, they can sense that it's all God, but they're, they're waiting to see something. They're waiting for somebody else to confirm rather than to believe it. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about Thomas, and we talked about how Thomas, you know, Thomas was just real. Thomas was like, hey, 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 it's something that don't happen to me in my life right now, and I'm going to need a witness. And what did Jesus show up and do? He showed up and gave them a witness. He says, come on, Thomas, put your, put your hand in my hand. Feel mm -hmm. that hole. Come on, feel it. Touch it. Mm-hmm. What was he doing? He was providing witness. What did Jesus tell us in Acts chapter 1 and 8? He says, and you shall be what? Witnesses. He wants for us to be a witness of what he has done in whose life? In your life. So there's this battle. The scriptures will speak for themselves. The scriptures will speak for themselves. Scriptures speak for themselves. All we have to be willing to do is be open. Come on. I love it. I love it. I love it. People say, Pastor, I don't get that. You know, we read those scriptures, but I didn't get that. That went, ooh, over my head. Hmm. Ain't nothing Pastor can do at that point. <laughs> it's going to take what? The witness of the Lord is going to take the teaching of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to help you begin to get it. He says that there needs to be a burning inside of our heart where the scriptures speak for themselves. Hmm. So how do we get there? 
Good point. Glad you asked that. So how do we get there? How do we get there, church? How do we get there where we allow the scriptures to speak for themselves? How do we get there? Glad you asked. We need to sit in. Say, what does that look like? What does it mean to sit in the scriptures? That means sometimes we have to read the scriptures. You notice I didn't say scriptures. The scripture. Sometimes we have to read the word. Maybe it's just the word. Just the. And we have to sit in it until we begin. Wait a minute. Why is that the there? Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of the? What is this? What is this junction? This or, and, or this therefore? What is it there for? Hmm. We're sitting in it. When we begin to ask the questions to the scripture so that the scripture can begin to give us the answers, that's what was taking place because Jesus is the what? The living word. Amen. Come on. The living word is amongst us. And these guys, they just happened to be open as they were walking down, as they were talking about what had took place. Jesus shows up and the scripture is opened up to them. And he begins to explain to them the questions that they had that maybe no one can answer for them. But you know who can? Jesus can. Amen? And Jesus wants to walk with you. He wants for you to take some time just to sit. Sit and just ask questions. Come on, y'all. For some of us, we can't sit and ask questions because we're afraid. Jesus may say something to us that we don't like. You know, like, oh, you foolish people. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That doesn't sound very edifying. Mm. You, you can't say that today. You can't call people foolish. Uh, you, you, you can when you're Jesus. <laughs> you, 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 you can when you have been crucified, been buried. Come on. And you've been raised from the dead. And you can begin to say, you know, there's some foolishness that is going on here. Part of the battle is that there is some foolishness that's going on here. Mm. Can't get nobody to talk back to me on this one. <laughs> some foolishness. <laughs> yeah, you need you 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 need 15 witnesses from the outside before you can begin to believe mm. what he already said in his word. Mm. Come on. He just said, it's some foolishness. You've been living this all your life. You, you spent 13 years of your life studying the scripture, and now the scripture is here, and you don't believe. It, there's some foolishness that's going on here. He says, how, how, can you, how can you find it hard? How can you find it hard to believe what the prophet said? Now, in our day and time, you know, we think all prophets are false. <laughs> but back then, you know, the prophets, you know, when they spoke, you know, hey, 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 you know, hey, the, the pro wait a minute, wait a minute. The bona fide, certified prophet spoke. I'm not going to be the one to say I didn't hear, I didn't hear what he said. So, so how are you going to say you didn't believe what the prophet said? I love how it says it. It says is that he went back to him all the way back to Moses and began to explain to him. He said, wait a minute. I'm, I'm going to go all the way back to Moses so that you can begin to get an understanding about what that Passover really was. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, because some, some of y'all, y'all still thinking that there's a scandal that's taking place. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that, you know, what took place with Jesus and they killed him and everything and he was resurrected. That was real. Mm. He, he was trying to explain to him is that brokenness, suffering, it is a real thing. And he was trying to tell him that is that the path through it. The path through it is Jesus. Jesus says that I am the way and I am what? The life. Yeah. Come on. I'm the way, y'all. You trying to figure out how do I win this battle? Because <laughs> he's killing me. Mm. Come on. I'm taking punches right and left. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel it. <laughs> All down into my toes. What, what is it that I'm feeling? <laughs> my unbelief. Mm. My unbelief is what I'm feeling. Because he's already told me in the scriptures everything that I need to know. He's told me in my he's told me in the scriptures. He says, you know, won't you pick up my word? 
So once you get to the place where you begin to taste and see that the Lord is what? He's good. <laughs> Amen. That's what the scriptures is, is all about. It is, it's about this, this, this relationship that we have that he says, if you want to go deeper, we can go deep. Amen. <laughs> Don't you love that? I, I, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Because, you know, he just keep it real with us. <laughs> you know, Jesus keep it so real with us, he tells us that we shall. <laughs> he tells us that we still net. Mm -hmm. He tells us that, you know, he, we ain't got no faith. Mm -hmm. He just calls it the way he mm -hmm. sees it. Mm -hmm. You know, what you going to do about it? What, what, what can you do about it? Well, I'll tell you what some of us do about it. Well, you know, I just ain't going to go to that church anymore. Mm. <laughs> I don't like I don't I don't I don't like I don't like the way you do that, Jesus. I don't like how you just be coming at me, mm. be coming for me and everything, Jesus. You know why you got to do it like that? You know, be putting me on blast and everything. Jesus is saying it's because you need some truth. Mm. You 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 fighting a battle when you think that you're gonna get through it on your own. I'm trying to explain to you is that I'm the way. Come on, you say you want victory. I am victory. Yeah. Come on, you say you say you want you want something to eat. I, I am that bread. You, you say you want something to drink. I am that drink. What what is it that Jesus is trying to tell us inside of our battle? He said it ain't about you. Hmm. It ain't about you. It's about our relationship. Because you're still looking for something before you just believe me. The Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing. Is that what it said? It does. Faith comes by yeah. hearing. And hearing by what? Yeah. The word. Somehow we have fed into the belief that we got to see it clearly before we believe. Mm. Well, I don't know about y'all, but in the Bible, all those people that was before us, they had to believe before they see it. And then it even goes on to say some of them believed and they never saw. Never saw. They never saw the promise. And here it is that we got, we got to see the promise of what we just celebrated. Three weeks ago. And some of us are right back into the same battle. Just like these disciples were. What was the battle was? The battle was about their faith. <laughs> you know, I saw it. I even heard it. But I don't know if I believe it. You think all that is true? You think what happened to Jesus? You think that's 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 what's what's up? Or was that was that some type of propaganda right there before I Wait a minute, I, I walk. Wait a minute, man. Hold on, what you talking about? Man, I walked by there, man. I felt the blood. Mm -hmm. Man, you know, some, and, and how they said, they said some of the ladies, they went to the tomb. That's what they said. They, 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 they said, said some that. of the ladies went to the tomb mm -hmm. and they testified what Jesus said and that he wasn't there. Man, I don't know. I don't know if I trust what they said. Hmm. Hmm. And you wonder why you're in the battle. And Jesus is saying, come on, let me walk with you a little bit farther. Let me talk with you a little bit longer until something begins to burn in the inside. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll never forget this, and I share this story. I'll never forget, you know, when we first started our church, you know, and, and you know, we went out and we prayed for any and everybody. <laughs> you know, we just was excited, you know, to be in the community and do the work, you know. So we was out there in Maricopa, uh, at Beck David uh, community and everything and we was praying for this one young man and he was so strung out on drugs and everything else. Body all racked with all types of disease and different things. But I'll never forget something he came back years later and told me. He says, Pastor, he said that first time you prayed for me, he says, fire went through my body. Wow. Fire. I felt some fire go through my body. And at that moment, I knew that, you know, all that stuff that was causing me to be addicted and bound up, I knew I was supposed to give it up. Mm. But I just didn't know how. And he said, you know, every time I would come to church, 
my annual visit. You would say something, and that same fire would hit me. Now, I don't know about y'all, but you know, I'm mean, talking to a person that has addiction. <laughs> so I don't know if what he's telling me is true or not. But what I do know is that the Lord was witnessing to him. Yeah. What I do know is that every year, every year, mm -hmm. this man would call me somehow. I don't know how he would remember my number or he would get in touch with me. But he would get in touch with me to begin to tell me about how he's still fighting the battle. Still fighting the battle. Still feeling it, but not believing it. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the testimony of the church. Still fight the same battle because we still ain't believing. Mm -hmm. Come on. How many years have we been hearing about it's going to be the great revival? Mm -hmm. Woo! The great revival is coming. And we've been believing, but we ain't seen. seen. And God is saying, it's going to take place when we do more believing. Mm -hmm. When we do more believing, we're going to begin to experience the great revival. You know, I love reading about in church history about the great revivals that took place. Mm -hmm. Because out of the great revivals that took place, you know, one of the things that they would testify is that it was like a prayer meeting. It was like two of us, three of us. And then it grew to 10. Mm -hmm. This got to be interesting. So y'all had a prayer meeting and only two or three people showed up. I can believe that because it sounds a whole lot like prayer. Prayer meeting. So, so it sounds like a whole lot like Bible study. You know, it's available to everybody, but only a few choose to show up. Mm -hmm. And they begin to tell the story about, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, we sat down and we prayed for about a year, you know. Maybe 20 people at the most they have attended. We just kept praying. Five years showed up. We had the kingdom pass. And all of a sudden, we began to see a great outpouring that took place in our city. Mm -hmm. hmm. I wonder what battle they was praying through. I think it was the battle that we all have to pray through. The one that says, don't give up. Mm. Hmm. Maybe that's the battle that you're going through right now. It's the one that says, don't give up. I, I, I wonder if they was praying through the battle is that, you know, why should I continue to do this? Ain't nobody joining us. Mm. Yeah, you know, ain't, don't, ain't nobody else believing. Why, why we got to keep believing? Mm. You know, sometimes the battle that we're fighting is that we're, we 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 want we, we we want everybody else to be where we at. Mm -hmm. I love how Jesus tells tells the uh, the uh, disciple John. He's like, "Hey, Jesus, well, what about him?" He said, "Don't worry about him. Don't worry about him. Follow me." I, I, I wonder if that's the battle that we're fighting. The battle where we're supposed to be following Jesus. Mm. When he says, come, follow me, and I will teach you how to be what? Fishers of men. Amen. Maybe that's the battle that we're fighting. Is that we're still fighting to learn how to follow. Mm. You know, I'm 35, 40 years into this thing, and I'm still learning how to follow. follow. Jesus. Uh, Jesus? Je wait, well, Jesus? Jesus? In, in New Mexico? No, I don't know about that. <laughs> Woo I don't know about that. Hey, Jesus? <laughs> what? You want, you want me to follow you where? Yeah, you know, into the uttermost parts of the earth. Uh, can you define the uttermost parts of the earth? Can you tell me where that's at? Maybe that's what our battle is. Mm. Maybe, maybe the battle that we're fighting and the, the reason that we just can't just get up and just follow Jesus is that Jesus didn't sing. I don't know if Jesus sang. But, <laughs> but maybe it wasn't a song that you liked. 
Mm. I mean, you know, can he even sing? You know, I'm gonna follow somebody. They gotta be able to sing real good, don't they? Mm. They, they got they gotta be able to get up and you know and hoop and preach and all that kind mm. of good stuff, right? Before I can begin to follow them, don't mm. Hmm. I, I think Jesus is still saying that you know all I'm trying to do is walk with you long enough till you get some understanding, mm -hmm. till you begin to realize that it's me. Mm. See, it's something that happens to us, Pastor Sharon. When we walk with God and we realize that it's God that's walking with us, we're forever changed because we're forever grateful mm -hmm. that God would love us so much that he would say, you know, I'm going to walk you up out of your mess. Mm -hmm. and, and many of us, you know, maybe, maybe that's our great dilemma is that we don't want for God to walk us out of our mess because we're embarrassed that, you know, we're in this mess and we're supposed to know better. Mm. But let me tell you something. Jesus found you when you was a mess. Yeah, he did. And he walked you out of there. Mm -hmm. So if you get back into a mess, guess what he's going to do? Walk you out of there. Mm -hmm. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to open up those scriptures mm -hmm. until something burns in the inside of you. So what's my challenge to you this week? Come on. You got to read some scripture. Amen. Come on, y'all. Somebody say, read the scripture. Read the scripture. Read the scripture. Read the scripture. He says he wants the scripture to burn inside of you. Now, it's hard for the, the scripture to burn inside of you if you don't do what read. You know how we used to tell, how we used to pray. It's good, Lord, just bring this to my remembrance. What they used to tell us? <laughs> Holy Spirit can't bring it to your remembrance if you don't put it in you. Come on. He, he needs for you to go ahead and put something down in you. You know, as, as the teachers say, you know, hey, listen, listen now. Listen. He, you, you, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta work it. You got you got to do your lesson. Come on. In other words, what he was saying, if you're going to get to be good in physics, you got to work the problem. Mm -hmm. Is it frustrating? Yeah, but you can't quit. Because <laughs> guess what? Until you learn to work the problem, you'll be taking this class. Mm. <laughs> I think that's part of the battle that we have, is that we don't want to keep taking this class, but God is just simply saying, you ain't learned no lesson. <laughs> we can't sit down and eat until you begin to take some of this stuff in. See, that's the thing that I loved about the guys that was on the road, is that they listened to what Jesus was saying. Mm -hmm. They was excited about what Jesus was saying. They internalized it. So Jesus said, come on, man. Yeah, I'll stay, I'm stay at your house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to break bread with you. Mm -hmm. And when he broke bread with them, he said, that was the last piece that I need. Wow. Why? Because they had been open all this time to begin to understand what they saw. Mm. A lot of times in our life, we're not open to understand what God is saying, what took place in our life. Mm. One of the things that you guys have been hearing me talk about is trauma. <laughs> and it's trauma that's taking place everywhere in all of our lives. Everybody has experienced trauma. People that keep telling you they ain't experienced no trauma, I don't know, maybe they ain't lived. But we experience it even our kindergartners. What are we having to do? Send them to therapy. Because mm. it's been traumatic what has taken place the last three years. Mm -hmm. Come on, in our own homes. All the kind of stuff that's happening. And it's it's a battle. Mm -hmm. But remember what he always tells us. The battle belongs to who? The Lord. So what? Hold your peace. Yeah, I know it's a lot of stuff we don't understand. A lot of stuff that made me mad I don't understand. But he says, you know what, Ryan? It ain't yours to understand. He says, your battle that you fight is to follow me, to hear my scriptures. Let me, let me open them up to you. Can, can, I, get, can, I, can I just be honest with y'all? You, you know, I spent a whole year in Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Every day. Romans chapter 8. <laughs> God opened this thing up to me. You know, it wasn't until 
November that I got to verse 32. Mm -hmm. I got to verse 32 and I began to shout. Let's go to verse 32, Romans 8 and 32. Let's get the phone, I'll get that quick. <laughs> well, I got excited. I came out and started shouting. What? I finally, I finally, it's November and I finally made it. Mm. I'm going to close with this. I promise. Yeah, we go have lunch after this. Go, go break some bread. Romans 8, verse 32. He says this when I got to this. He said, Since, you, you get like that, how, they like how that same star, since, since, he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all. Won't he also give us everything else? Come on. That don't burn inside your heart. <laughs> I don't know what will. I think he's challenging you. <laughs> he said, since, since, come on. Come on, I think he's keeping it real with us right now. I think so. Come on. Since he didn't spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he give us everything else? What, what else do you want from God? Mm -hmm. Keep talking about what God ain't did for you. He says, what else do you want? Mm -hmm. And he goes on to say, who dares accuse us of whom God has chosen for his own? Don't you like it? He says, no one. <clears throat> for God himself has given us right standing mm -hmm. with himself. Don't get no deeper than that. <laughs> God himself Said, you can hang out with me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why? Because of what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we had a battle. But the battle is not what you think. I was telling Pastor Sharon, I said, you know, you know, we just go through these things where, you know, the devil likes to mess with you. You know, for a season. You know the thing that he likes to mess with you about the most is who you say is Lord. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you he just like to show up and just just get up in your faith. Hey, is Jesus still Lord? Mm -hmm. Who you say he is? You know, it just 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 mess with you, get your mind all messed up, mm -hmm. get you all in your feelings. But when you tell him emphatically, Jesus. Is Lord? So I guess they still mean it. All right, I'll be back. But do you mean? Do you mean that Jesus is Lord? See, that's part of the battle. Is to get to the place where Jesus is Lord. You know, Jesus didn't understand this. You know, he said, like, oh, why are we, why are we still having this conversation? He says, because, see, you know, you selected Rodney. You, 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 you want me to be Lord over the things you want me to be Lord over. And I keep pointing to you, this is what I want to be Lord over. I want to be Lord over it all. What, what, what you mean, all? How do you define that? All is what? Come on. All is all. What? All is all. But, but you keep going to pull out those little things. And say, you say, God, you can be over this. But I'm going to be over this right here. And every year, you know, he keep my pal keep getting smiling. You, I'm, I'm happy to be able to say that. My pal used to be this big. It's getting down, you know. It's growing down for the things that I'm still wanting to keep control of. And, and I just want to just be transparent with y'all. There's still some things that I, you know, Lord, I don't, I don't know about giving you this one yet. You know, mm -hmm. we just keep walking. Part of my battle. Mm -hmm. Come on, we just keep walking on the road with me, you know. Mm -hmm. Open up the scripture about why he, I need to, to let him be Lord over this. Mm -hmm. You know, I already know it's the things that I know, right? But I don't believe. You know, and that's one of the things that we still go through, right? right? I know that his ways is better than my ways, but somehow I still have that battle inside of my mind, inside of my being. And just maybe, Lord, I've got a little bit wiser. Maybe I know a little bit better than you. 
I, I just love how Jesus just keep it real with me. <laughs> you, you don't really believe that, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but you know, I thought I would give it a shot. Okay, I said I was closing with this, right? So I, I'm, I'm trying to close with this. So what did we learn in verse 32? Romans 8, 32, he said he's going to open this up. So he said is that if he didn't spare, God spared his own son, right? So how will he not give you everything else? So in other words, God is all in. And in other words, he says, I'm so all in that I'm even going to let you hang out with me on my right side. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm putting you back in fellowship with me. Even though you might be a scoundrel, you may have done some things, he says, you're still part of my family. That's a revelation to me. Like, God, how can, how can you just accept me like that? Because, <laughs> you know, even inside family, you know, it's conditions. <laughs> Come on, can I, can I, can I holler at y'all? You know, inside, you know, it's conditions, you know. Well, bro, we're going to let you roll. But, Come on, even inside your, your best clicks, where you, 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 you run the click, mm -hmm. it's the conditions. But God says, listen, once you meet the standard, and, and you go ahead and accept Jesus for who he is and what he's done, he says you win. And once you win, he says, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. Mm -hmm. He says, come on and roll with me. And these guys are walking with Jesus, the things they don't understand, things that they understand, but they still don't believe, but they still having a conversation. Hmm. That's my jump off point right there. He said, they were still having a conversation. conversation. What about you? When's the last time you had a conversation with God? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Conversation means that it's two ways. Mm. You're talking to him, he's talking to you. Most of the times we want to have a conversation with God, we call it our prayer request, is that it's us throwing stuff to God and us not listening to God. But the jump off point is, in this battle, when was the last time? You just had a conversation with God. And I close with that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that there's all kind of battles. All kind of battles, Lord God, that we're going through and that we're in. But Lord, the thing that we need to understand It says it's not ours. Hmm. It's yours. So, Lord, whatever it is that we're facing and things that's keeping us up through the night, Lord, hey, it ain't ours. It's yours. And so, like, I guess this is the jump off point because you told us, you said, be anxious for nothing, but in all things in prayer and in supplication, let your request be made known. Mm -hmm. And then you told us, you said, give it to you. Mm -hmm. Give it to you. Well, you even told us, you said, is there anything too hard for the Lord? So I'm speaking and I'm praying for some people who may feel that it's too hard for you. But you said there's nothing too hard for you. Don't matter what you're going through, how addicted you are, how messed up you are, how bound you are. He said, ain't nothing too hard for you. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to come on. All of you, every one of you, and I want you to learn of me, and I want you to take my yoke, for it is easy, and I will give you peace of heart. Thank you for giving us peace of heart if we were only choose to accept. So I thank you, Lord God for what you're doing and what you're saying. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Right, well, we want to go ahead and transition over.
so that we can go ahead and get through it today. Uh, we want to go ahead and, and let you know that it's available to you if you choose so to want to, to give. Uh, there's three ways that you can give here at Acts Christian Center. Uh, there's three ways. The first way is that you can give by text, and I believe that it's going to be on the screen. That's going to be 520-350-355-2820. All right. And it's on the screen. All right. Yeah. Yeah. She be wanting me to memorize all this stuff. You know, I all this stuff, man. I just want to pour it out, man. I'm pretty sure I can, another world. I still have to remember these numbers. And uh, and then the third way that you can give is is the, I mean the second way that you can give is by going to the website at actscc.org. And the third way is by mail at three three seven one South Vine Street. And what we want to do is just thank you for your giving because this is what allows us to continue to bring forth ministry and. What we want you to know and, and to take away from all of this is that uh, we love you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we respect you. You're part of our community. And so uh, we want to hear from you so that we can pray with you, pray for you. So if you ever have a prayer request, go ahead and send it to us through our website or you can simply send us an email um, and, and we'll make sure that we pray for you. Or you can leave a comment on Facebook. So that we can pray for you. So with that being said, let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Father, for every person, Lord God, who chose, Lord God, to, to give, Lord. Lord, we ask that you would bless them, Father. Father, we ask that you would bless those, Lord God, Father, who uh, who didn't give, who just have a desire, Father. We bless and pray, Lord God, for those, Lord, who still contemplate it, who, who say things that I know. But I still don't believe that it's, it's a good thing for them. But we pray for them, Lord. Pray, Lord God, that you just show them the way. Show them that you can't out give God. And so with that being said, Lord, we pray your richest blessing upon all of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So that just leaves us. Any, any, any uh, announcements? No announcements. Okay, going once, going twice, going all right. So, so we tell you here at Acts Christian Center is that we love you. We respect you and that you're a part of our community. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.